So, the language in which I write Gujarati, like uh, many other Indian languages, uh, carries literature for several centuries. In fact, from 12th, 13th centuries, uh, 12th century, 13th century, so now about the same duration as the languages like English and French and German, and no difference really. Dante started writing in the vulgar, you know, in the Italian language about the same time when Narsi Mehta started writing in Gujarati, slightly later, but then there is a history of 200 years before Narsi Mehta. Narsi Mehta was about 14th century and for 12th century. So this is the kind of language uh, which we are talking about. It is no tribal language. It is no, some people say, no, this is Bhasha Kavi. Well, everybody is a Bhasha Kavi. So this, it comes from Abhabhansha. So Sanskrit, Prakrit and Abhabhansha were three pan Indian languages. Literature was being written only in these three languages. Then it would reach whole of India. So our writers liked to write till 20th century and they were Shastras, that Mahakavya is written in Sanskrit, Prakrit and Abhavansha. Like that there are any number of Karikas. So the language in which I write today uh, came as an option. You give up the national leadership, you accept smaller leadership, but then you are able to do different things. It's not necessarily a rebellion against Sanskrit. Sanskrit was not, a, not only a language of Brahmins. In Gujarat it was the language of the Jains. Great Jain poets and scholars wrote it. So this gives kind of general framework of the language. Basically, language as an option to a larger universe. You come to a smaller world. So the fun is that you dig deep. And uh, so this collection of poems is my third collection. I don't believe in producing too many books or writing too many poems. But one must constantly explore so that one doesn't repeat himself. So this was uh, published in 2009 and this is already 13, 14. I hope now to bring out the next collection, but in a gradual way, not a desperation to become known all over the world, but you explore something. So this collection is called Vakhar. Vakhar is kind of storehouse. So there's an irony about it that you think you put things in the attic, so to say, you know. You throw things in a storehouse, pell-mell. So this is a kind of option to well-formed literature which you find in Indo-English language so that the publisher is happy, a large number of books sell, you become famous, the West accepts you and you become rich. This is one kind of adventure. This is another kind of adventure. Uh, where uh, there is mockery. So, now I wrote a preface to this, which has the word Adipati and Lekhak. So, anyone who knows Gujarati language or even know, has read Gandhi in English would be reminded of Hind Swaraj, where there is similar dialogue between Adipati, that means the editor <laughs> of a newspaper and uh, Vachak, his reader. And the editor is Gandhi himself and the Vachak are the, are the um, uh, uh, people who believed in uh, violent overthrow of British rule. So Adipati argues with them. But here the tables are turned. The Adipati and Lekhak, not Vachak. So Adipati says that, look, you know, a book like you know, Vakhar and you are giving Praveshak, you know, such a small little book and you are writing preface to it. So, so the writer says that you get into the book and then you will realize what it is. So, the authority figure and the rebellion against it is uh, something that I have done in a kind of, you know, 
just fully. Uh, some of the other poems which are, you know, which uh, readers like in Gujarat have been translated in many languages, but I enjoyed writing them. One is an address to Saraswati, and the first lines are Mayura Parthi Uttar Sharada Singh Uparcha. You get down from the peacock and you mount the lion. And there is a story uh, in the Upanishads where uh, Saraswati was insulted because she was not given yagna bhag, yagya bhag, uh, her share from a yagna, and so she destroys the yagna. But today is the same, something happened, you know. Skills are being rewarded, but knowledge as such, inquiries are being stopped. So that is Sinhavahini Stotra. Then there is a long poem called Vakhar, that means a kind of pell storehouse from which, and uh, a secretary, an IS secretary comes to a location, a locality in a city, in Indian city, and uh, there is a huge storehouse there, and the people are being disturbed by that, because lots of things are going on day and night there in the storehouse, and lots of things have been stored up there. And the people around there, they are disturbed. So they appeal to the IAS officer. And uh, the thing is, once again, a dialogue where only one of the representatives of the residents who had served in BSF, <laughs> Border Security Forces, come back. So there's this play of border boundaries and security and so on. He has come back. But he wants to see what is this. And finally, the officer tells him that uh, the location, the locality is a part of this storehouse. The storehouse is not in the locality. So then they break the storehouse and appropriate everything. So when the man comes, the officer, he says, now no need. We have solved our problem. So to conclude, let me say that my first collection, which was called Odysseus Nu Halesu, so that was about a personal unconscious, a surreal poem. And it used Greek myth when Odysseus comes back from Ithaca after winning Ithaca, after winning Troy, when he comes back to Ithaca, he is cursed by the sea god Poseidon because he had blinded Poseidon's son. So Poseidon tells uh, him that you cannot go back home. When you land in Ithaca, you have to take the oar that you have with which you have traveled seven seas and you have to go inland, so far inland that people would ask you, why are you carrying this winnowing fan? Because they would not have any idea of what is a ship and what is an oar. And there you have to plant so that eventually they would know well, this is not a winnowing fan, there is an oar and there is a ship and then there is a sea. So in the first collection I felt that you have to take poetry somewhere that they don't understand what is this. They say, what is this? But eventually they will understand. So it's poetry of patience and rebellion and personal. And this one uh, is uh, political and conscious. In between there is a book which makes use of, it's called Jatayu, for which Sahitya Academy gave us award and it has been translated and so on. So that uses mythology, but it turns with mythical stories upside down or unhinges them. For example, this poem on Jatayu, who uh, fought with uh, Ravana uh, when Sita was being abducted. Now, the story of this has been told in a different way, in the sense that the young Jatayu is the only vulture which flies very high. So the mother and father are worried. So one day later on when he was flying very high, he sees Ravana coming into the forest from one side and Rama entering into the forest from the other side. So loss of innocence. So instead of myth being, you know, a storehouse of knowledge, here in this poem, it becomes a vehicle of innocence, radical innocence. And but radical innocence is taken away from him. So he enters into a fight with 
both good and evil. Because even good doesn't understand, and evil also doesn't understand. But they are against each other. This man is caught. Like this, uh, these three collections and this journey from personal psychological unconscious into the political collective psychological unconscious, and then various uses of Gujarati language, uh, various rhythms and spoken language and written language, and because there has been always an intermingling of the two. They are, Sanskrit and Gujarati are not inimical, inimical, nor are Boli and Basha inimical. There is a continuum and a variation. So this is what I, yes. Uh, if politics is understood as a study and use of power generated within a society, then I think that no ideology should govern the use of that power which the society generates for itself. In our times, there have been various ideologies, earlier the left, now the right, and so on. Now, what ideology does is, a group of people think it through. They produce a document or a system of knowledge. And then that system of knowledge, that document of knowledge is to be accepted by the rest, like Mao's Red Book. So basically, I believe that political unconscious is a shared experience of the whole people. And instead of an elite group thinking things through and presenting us an ideology, whether right or left doesn't make any difference to me, instead of that, there should be a dialogue, there should be a conversation. And poetry is that conversation, art is that conversation. And so art should replace ideology. If the political system were not democracy, then this would have been impossible. Because then nothing would come out of that conversation. But here, the conversation would result into exercise of power by the people, power which could be taken back. And India is a tremendous, you know, post independence, it has been a tremendous society, such a powerful society generates various conversations. Some of them might not be very erudite conversations. They would be just sign language commu communications and, you know, amongst people who might not be literate. Yet a conversation is going on. That is why every fifth year, every tenth year, they surprise the political leaders. That is why I believe that in democracy, this is the only way in which institutions would run to to the benefit of, as Gandhiji was said, used to say, chello manas, so unto the last. There is the only way, there is no other way.